ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the good, the bad, and the unknown, the newest and soon-to-be top podcast in the country. The GBU podcast is hosted by the man that made this possible, Frank Flowers. Frank is joined by his cousins who discuss daily topics, host interviews with intriguing guests, current news topics, and relating everyday experiences to their past experiences and stories of growing up in the Boston area. The GBU podcast is produced and brought to you by Mountain View Media. Mountain View Media is your go-to media production company for social media content and other internet content. And now, we kick it to Frank and the cousins in the studio. All right. (laughs) All right. We're actually on our fourth podcast. Beautiful. Done real well. You made it. Yes. First two rough. First one's rough. We're learning. It's never easy. But... uh, you know, we have a whole list of topics I love to get to and, and, and help out if you're listening. Uh, this one here, I'd like to talk about the, uh, the environment of the real estate uh, market right now and what's going on with uh, the rental market and landlords and everything like that. So I didn't have to look far. I do have a, a lot of friends that are in the, in the real estate business, uh, either developing or, or or managing, or, or broker, and uh, I have a real good friend of mine that's here today, uh, Gaidano Manganello, a true greaser from right from the moment. Manganello. We gave First, him a crash course in English, he's all set. First generation American. Proprio Italiano, proprio, proprio Italiano. But Gaidano's well-rounded, he he has a brokerage, he's, he's a broker in real estate, a developer, a manager, a, uh, everything real estate. rental, every, everything that has to do with me. And then we got uh, our realty, Mr. Privilege, cousin Anthony over here, <laughs> always, and yeah. a good look at one of the family, uh, cousin Bruno. Uh, yeah. Thank you. You got the hair. Thanks for that. I do have the hair. Frank yeah. thinks I dye it, but I'm telling you, the other day it I was don't great. Dye it. it was great. <laughs> I don't know what he's doing. I do not dye it. He thought it was gray the other day. Touch of gray. Right? No, it wasn't. It wasn't. Yeah, I, I put gel in it once in a while, and then when the gel no, fades, we would, goes away, he cuts it yeah, short. I, I, it's we great. were doing a job. I'm up with the lad. I'm looking down. I'm not great. Instead of paying attention, I'm like, you little shit. You, you got gray hair, too. I do He's have like, gray oh, wait, oh, that's dust. <laughs> it's just dust. <laughs> Over the last it year. It was dust <laughs> particle board. Over the last year, my hair is grayed. Yeah, see? Uncontrollably. Hey, gray is in, kid. I love it. I listen. What are you gonna do? Age with grace. I die at grace. Ray is in. You I'm, not, I'm not. A, I'm not a fan of people with hair bitching about how it's. Fine, <laughs> <laughs> Anthony. Oh, we love it, Anthony. Anthony. I mean, just dump it all. You look so much better. I, Grow do, the po- I do dump it all. I just didn't cut it this week. Grow the oh, ponytail. You didn't Grow the ponytail. Oh yeah, the uh, the Jordan's furniture special. <laughs> <laughs> all right. On a you're gonna meet our other cousin, John Paul. He shines it like a oh, Olin yeah. Paul. Yeah. Well, I met him. You go blind looking at him. Uh, <laughs> blind. <laughs> go ahead. Let me see. He's the stuff. best. Hey, that kid had the best head of hair when we were kids. Yeah, I remember yeah. that. Nice big curls. Did he brag about it? That's probably why he lost it. No, no. It was the, no, was jump on never bragged. Yeah. Not a bragger. No. You can't get nothing out of him. You want to rob a bank, go with Jim Powell. <laughs> Good to know. You'll see my reflection up his head. <laughs> Both of you. You'll blind everybody. You'll blind everyone. You get away. You're like, hey, read the note. I can't see it. <laughs> what, what's the very serious earth shattering topic today, well, Frank? I had to go to two meetings this week, and I think one, another one last week. And You're still going to meetings? One day at a time? Yeah. <laughs> town meetings. These are town meetings. One day and I got to tell you, uh, I'm, I'm a little bamboozled by the whole thing. Uh, you know, one was a town meeting here where I live, which was a debacle. Um, <clears throat> I feel like for a different reason, for different reasons, but just the whole environment of, of how it is, you know, you have these board members that, you know, people are, have their concerns and everything and, and they'll sit there on their phone or laptop while someone's talking to them. And, you know, if they're the head of the chair or whatever they may be, it's like they have no respect. You know what I mean? And, and, and that comes with reasoning. So, also, in my city where I grew up, which, uh, you know, we do a lot of business there, um, I had to go to two different meetings. And the topic is not only, uh, you know, I guess it's throughout the straight state and, and country, you know, they're all talking about uh, rent control, the 2% tax that they want to do on sales 
of certain properties, uh, um, the evictions, uh, condo conversions, uh, and also uh, real estate agents. You know, this is why I brought Gaidano in to bring us a little light on that. Um, you know, I think they're trying to take some business away from real estate agents also. But my problem is uh, this particular board, you know, there's uh, seven out of nine members in the board that don't own houses. You know, does it make a difference? Oh, big I time. personally think so. Uh, that's a Frank, huge. to clarify, these people are voted in. These aren't volunteers. No, they're voted in. They're voted in. I like to use the word installed, but they're installed. Well, I they think have a better, they have a better way to get these people in. They're installed by people who vote. Well, uh, let me just clarify because I know where you're going to go with that. <laughs> uh, they're more organized to get these people in because sure. no one knows them. They never grew up in Method, and people that, that grew up in Method are hard, having a hard time because of the way they're voting them in or marketing them. Let's just say. Marketing. Do you do you think that they're more organized? They are. Yeah, absolutely. Do you also think that they have the free time to absolutely. dedicate? To they're all at Nero Coffee Shop and all the high end coffee shops because they're all trust fund babies, most of them. <laughs> and the reality of it, we're more concerned about fixing problems and making it, uh, uh, you know, more affordable for everybody. When these people just just pay attention of getting people in. And then I think it's just passing a certain agenda to, to get across, which I personally think everyone's getting bamboozled in because at the end of the day, it's not about any of the work in person. It's, it's, a, it's a political agenda for the government. That's my take. What does the political agenda for the government have to do with affordable housing? Well... We have laws in place for affordable housing. We do, and we have one of probably one of the most progressive states when it comes to affordable housing. So I don't, I don't think that state policy is necessarily the issue here. I think where we the rubber meets the road, uh, the townships that have to enact the policies. You know, state mandates you got to have ten percent of your total housing index, meaning if you've got a thousand homes. 10% need to be affordable. Not in Boston. Mayor Wu extorts you for some, extra time. Some communities have inclusionary zoning, but they still are required to hit the 10%, right? So what happens? If you're under the 10%, then you're, you're open season for developers to come in and, and do what's called a 40B development to be able to build affordable housing. But isn't 40B developments at this point, aren't they just used to extort the town's uh, that would be forced to comply with a 40B development to just allow the developer to do what they really want to do, which is not no, a 40B development? Not in the least bit. I mean, I've, I've personally gone through a 40B permitting process and have been awarded a 40B permit, and I can tell you um, it's more a collaboration than an extortion. Um, if anything, the extortion happens the other way. Uh, we were, you know, we had to do all types of different uh, monetary and and, um, you know, labor intensive, we'll call them donations, right? Sure. Um, and lost contributions. Money, broke even money on the first phase. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, we can get further into that. But, I mean, there's, there's what, I was, what I was really trying to get across is the laws are in place. The problem is, is when it gets down to the community level, the town level, their interpretation of these, how they handle them, there is no set standard as to how they transact. And because of that, it makes the developers skittish to move into certain communities. Some communities cost more than others to transact within. And all of that costs that additional time and energy and, and efforts, that, that bill gets borne by the, the end user, by the renter, by the buyer. So instead of taking these laws on their face value and saying, hey, listen, we've got a great program to build affordable housing, here it is, just play by the rule book and make it happen. And when we hit the 10%, we close it out. And then once they do, by the way, they have the ability to approve them at their discretion. And that's the benefit of being over the 10%. Now you can control the type of development and really city plan, but they don't. 
they make it so difficult. Uh, the term I can best use is obstructionist. They're obstructionist. They, they, they put all these artificial roadblocks in. They've got people sitting on these boards that aren't educated in development, that are casting votes, that can barely understand or comprehend the media that's put in front of them. Or don't even invest themselves. They or don't. They're just, or understand the risks. They expect developers to come into cities and towns, develop, and actually lose money. That's, that's, that's the conversation I've had with people, and right away they'll just walk away from that conversation because I'll play as I'm just an ignorant board member, or I mean town. But at the end of, at the, end of the day, all, all of that seems relatively irrelevant. These people are, in fact, the ones casting the votes, whether they're ignorant or not. They are the one who are voted into their positions to be able to cast no, the vote. Not in all cases. In, in a lot of these communities, they're volunteers. Sure. Right? But my, my point kind of is, you know, if you, have, if you have these state laws and the state has mandated this, this, this program, why make it exponentially more difficult? You're talking out of both sides of your mouth. Sure. Out of one side of your mouth, we have an issue where affordability is a problem, but then they're crucifying those that are trying to make it more affordable. So which which is it? You, well, can't, you can't have it they, both ways. I, well, give me an example of a developer trying to make something more affordable without doing an affordable housing development. Well, why would you? Exactly. That's capitalism. I'm doing one now. That's my point. We're in a capitalist market. That's my point. I'm not disagreeing there. Right. That's my right. point. So if the laws are going to be put in place to create more affordable housing, and they're going to make it more difficult one or the other, at the end of the day, right, if whatever town you want to pick, whatever quote-unquote nice town you want to be in, and they have this mandate to create 10% affordable housing in this town. Sure. Right? Now, if somebody creates uh, the development that, that hits that number, right? Any new development's got to be 10% or whatever it is. It, right? hits, the, it hits what number? The, the numerator, the denominator. Wh whatever the appropriate number is. The, the, the sort of the number I'm going for is, is less important than the end result, right? If there's a, a, a bid to put in affordable housing of any kind into any community that's not used to having what they would consider affordable housing, sure. right? The community itself is going to fight back and say, not in my backyard. And in Massachusetts, it's a lot because but, but that same community, that same community is is inhabited by the people that are installing the laws at the state level. Oh, I, I'm not disagreeing with you. So we have this hypocrisy on, on a giant of course. scale. Yeah, in theory, it's great. We want affordable housing, just not here. So let me ask and you that's this. that's what happens everywhere. So we let call the, you know what we call them? We call the NIMBYs. Not in my backyard. Of course. Okay. Yeah, let right? me ask you this. Uh, take, I know this is uh, not a, a wide range, but take Winchester. Sure. Okay. Sure. Very high end town. Affluent so community. The cheapest house is what? Two, two and a half million. Oh, you can still get them in the millions. You're not, you're not getting much. Maybe the shed for a million you're bucks. You're not getting much, yeah. A shed. Okay. So why don't we install affordable housing in that city? Let's let's let affordable housing go into that. At the same same amount that they asked for the like the city of Method. It's not gonna happen. So now Take the city of Method, like he was talking about, how they make it so many obstructions and just for a developer to do anything. We're doing, uh, at the moment, five units, which is small. Well, they've been anti-development forever. You have to go through a historical, depend, all, of Method is, all, all of Method is basically historical. Um, it's an 18-month delay. Where is the common sense? Why would you hold a developer or an investor, 18 months of, of, of financial hardship. And their answer is, it doesn't concern us, your financial hardship. That's their answer, which is unacceptable. It should be a 30 to 60, maybe maybe a 90-day decision. Of, so you got to inform the abutters. You have to have a site plans drawn. 90 days, you, you, can get it done. you can get it done. You can, but that doesn't allow the town to, to have your input. Well, to release the historical decision. That's what I'm talking about. They, they do that because within those 18 months, You'll their, change your mind. their mandate is to try to sway you otherwise. Okay. Then the board takes sure. The board I'll takes use, its I'll time. Use, I'll use my town as a quick example. I'll, I'll take your input. What town? Foxford. Oh, okay. Right? I thought you were talking about Oh, no, my town, where I live. I'm thinking Belmont. There's uh, is a, a, a big swath of land that came up. Developer wants to build there. Right now, Boxford is... Almost entirely single-family homes. I don't think there's a multifamily in Boxford that exists. We also have no commercial uh, zoning short of maybe two buildings. How are your taxes? Ridiculous. 
right? That's why. That's okay. I'm not complaining. I still live there. I knew it before I moved in, okay. right? Um, now, they just finished, or they're in the process of their phase, they're finishing phase one of a 55 plus community. Okay. Right? Fine. Nobody really particularly cares, right? Now, a developer comes in. He wants to build another 55 plus community, different developer, different piece of land. This one's much bigger. Okay. Right? The town is throwing a fit. Right, town's like we don't want all this extra traffic in town. We don't have stoplights. We don't have we don't have a stoplight in town. We don't have anything in town. Sure. Right. So the develop developer sounds goes, like discrimination to me. Developer goes, okay, no problem. What I'm going to do is I'm going to build this 40B development, and now you guys get to pick. So that in this sense, the 40B development is used as a threat. It's not a threat. I understand. It's a vehicle. I understand. It's a mechanism for achieving an end for the Correct. developer. Yeah. Not for the developer. For the state, we have a housing shortage. I get it. We have an affordability issue. But you're telling me that if you don't create supply, you can't quench the, the demand. The developer doesn't want to build 40B. He wants to build the 55 plus. Sure. So what he's saying is if you don't, the state's going to force me to build this. Correct. Okay. So that's still extortionary. Now, for it's me, not, it's a vehicle. He's saying that this is not what we do for our business. But you're making it so that I can't conduct normal business, which is your right. Yeah. So my he, right is to use the laws that that support my my model. So there's no and this is this is no this, to my knowledge, right? It's still a two acre minimum in Boxford, right? For the prop for a property, right? There's there's 40 B's all variants. And it's 40 B's and it's, all variants. It's right? But it's my point. It's automatic. The 55 plus he needs a variance for. The 40B, he wouldn't need a variance because it's automatic. There's a demand for 55 plus. Correct. Right? There is. Right? So it's 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 so it's a is, bit so is I guess here's the better question. Do you think the 40B development rules, intentions are being used to actually create affordable housing, or do you think they're actually just being used as threats so that developers can build the thing they want to build in the first place? I don't think it's a threat at all. I think like I think said, it's, like it's a, a means to an end. Right, it's we need to getting we need they, housing, but that's not what it's being used for. Uh, let's it, let, let's concentrate in the Boston area because that's sure. where the real issue lies. In oh, abutting, no, I, think, I, I don't cities. think he's wrong. No, the, he's the issue not. is everywhere. I think people from from Boston area, you know, those surrounding cities, they're getting they're selling their house at a, at a high, and they would love to go to Boxwood at you know. 60, 65 years old, 50, over 55, and because their kids are out of the house. And yeah. That's where they want to be. Would they you don't want to be in the middle of the city. Would you say it's not more affordable, obviously more affordable For than, them. than the, the properties and the communities that surround the, the city? 100%. 100%, right? Okay. So you get to downsize, save some money, move into what I would I would consider a quaint and very nice community. Quieter. And but it also doesn't fix anything with the affordable yeah. housing situation well you're building million dollar 55 plus condos you're not building three hundred thousand dollars well, i think bedrooms. i think i think we have to take a step back that's and, what it takes understand to understand that there's there's a wide swath of of home buyers and demand varies so for every you know let's say for every million dollar town home they're putting up that's 55 plus those people could be leaving um a cape that's where it's seven hundred and saying, "Hey, we want to go live in a community." They could also be leaving a two million dollar home in Reading, saying we want to downsize. Sure. So you're you're creating a unit and opening another unit up for sale, whether it costs more, or costs less, because the next person that's buying that unit could be upgrading from a five hundred thousand dollar single family. So there's a trickle down effect there, right? By creating that one unit, there's a movement in the market, and the end result there is an opening, whether that be an apartment somewhere or a or a starter home. There's going to be an opening somewhere that somebody's either trading up or trading out of. So it will create affordability. But it, it, it will only do it if they stop making it so expensive to attain the permits. Do you know how much it costs to get a 40B permit? You, have, you. you have consultants, 40B consultants, sure. 40B attorneys, specialized. Sure. We're talking at like $1,700 an hour specialized. Sure. We have civil engineers. You have to come to the table completely, whole plan in place, right? Sure. Those plant sets cost anywhere from a hundred, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars without oh. the blink of an eye. Sure. Then it's all the meeting it's time. Half a million. Half Shit. a million to start. That's assuming that it goes quickly. It took me two years and land court. So I won't give you the final number on mine, but it was it's enough money to build a nice home. Sure. Okay. So 
so that money now that I had spent, when you then take that cost, gets averaged out across all the units, and now that cost gets borne by whom? Well, it, as affordable housing, they have to they have to twenty five percent, right? Yeah. But, but those other rents, the other seventy five sure. at a market rate, the reason why they're so high is because they they make it expensive. There's a there's a piece there, there's a piece there that the permitting you know okay. it but costs that, that, that much. You're you're that's a strong assumption to then say that you're bearing it out in the rents because if nobody was renting your stuff, well, at it has the to market, it has to debt service. It has the debt service. I, I understand that. Institutional financing, and you have to use money. I don't think anybody money. develops to lose money or break I'm not even. saying that's the case, but the idea of saying that I have to pass my cost on to the renter is ridiculous. The it's idea a, is the renter has to bear the burden because that's what the market is. It's not well, the other way around. But but the, the market only has to keep increasing because the cost of develop increases. The market only has to keep increasing because there's a supply shortage. Again, so if the supplies increase, the rents are going to go down. In theory, that's if you can you can meet the demand. There's not much profit. The, they do multiple multiple projects to make a real good profit. Frank, today. you you'd be surprised the the amount of profit on these projects. They barely debt service. I'm telling you, I, I'm not. This is not my disagreement. Barely, barely. This is not my disagreement. Unless you're BlackRock. Unless you're BlackRock. Nobody complains about them. All right, so how, how about this? Um, this was weird. So uh, all of us grew up, uh, you know, the way we grew up, it was you bought a multifamily, it was your first house. Yeah. Right? That was my first house, your first house, right? Your first house was multifamily, right? Uh, it, was a, it was an old single family. We made into a multifamily. Fair enough. Same, yeah. so, same thing. Got down to yours was too. Bruno, yours? Yeah, multi as well. Right? So all our first houses were multifamily because that's what our parents did. That's what we learned from. That's the people we, we sent around. Now. I bought a shithole for the record. I hear you. Now, you bought the, a shithole. No, I bought a shithole. <laughs> his, we all bought shithole. this? Talk about his story. His hair <laughs> scraped the ceiling. I said, what? What did you buy? And I didn't buy it in Mexico. At five foot three, how do you scrape the, the ceiling? The ceilings house? were shit. They had, the ceilings were about five, eight. Five, eight? Five, nine. You're being generous to yourself. Yeah, it, it, it was, was an old um, was, 17. It's like a farmhouse or something. Uh, late 1700s. We al- we almost bought a house when we in were Medford? when we were looking the first time we looked at a house in um it's the town next to Situate. Um Oh Ipswich. No, 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 no that's no. north. Situate's down. Uh, Situate's Marshfield. down. Marshfield. 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 Looked at a house in Marshfield. I love old houses and we walked into this house. It was built in like sixteen forty or something crazy. Yeah. And I walk into the house and it's gorgeous. Small house at the time where we were kids. You walk in the house. You take three steps forward. There's a hearth that you could fit five people in. I mean, oh, wow. just giant fire. Wow. Keep the house warm. Super cool. Yeah, it is cool. We walk past that into the kitchen. As I'm walking towards the stove where I'm going to spend a lot of my time, the ceiling keeps getting closer and closer to my head. Oh, yeah. And about four feet before I get to the stove, my head's touching the ceiling. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> where I was going with this that. is the, the, the new thing that I, I think companies like BlackRock started or whatever is I'm seeing a lot more people – buy single family homes to rent which was never a thing when we were kids and and never a thing between you and i i don't think sh- my own personal opinion sure should not be a thing they're doing okay Shouldn't. no 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 they are but i think they have till so they've got till i don't know so many years to liquidate all of them the they already voted that out oh really that Good. that that bill passed i mean no, but i mean individual investors sure and they shouldn't either I, I, institutional that investors guy? shouldn't Why? do it. Individual investors, a si- single family home. Listen, we're never going to. Here's here's the truth. We're never going to get to. And I'm a capitalist. I think you should be able to do whatever you want. But if we're trying to solve the affordability issue with housing, instead of coming up with all the things that. And Frank, we're not even getting to the topics you really want to talk about. I got right? It. We will. We will. But but in order to solve a lot of the problems that Frank wants to speak about, you have to increase supply. It all starts there. And you can't do that when, to your point, you've got institution, mega institutions. Sure. Right? Companies that own, what is, what is it? Just, they own like 50% Trillion. of every Fortune 500 company. Yes. Some obscene number. I mean, it's just gross. You have these corporations, these mega corporations that really run What's the that world. tell you? They, going after, they went after Apple. They went after all these other companies. They were, they've been doing this since the Rockefellers. They've... They, I think the Rockefeller was probably one of the first one that thought there was he was monopolizing in 
business way back when. Yeah. And they, they tore his business apart. And what did it do? It made him even bigger. Um, they did the same with, I mean, Microsoft. Remember they dismantled sure. them? They're sure. doing that to Apple. What is ta- If we have such a housing issue, why are they letting? Uh, well, that's my point. That's my point. Why? Why are they Could- letting? What do you mean, why are they letting? They're not jumping on them yet. No, they did. They did. I think they already voted it out that you can't do that. We can look it up. Yeah, but the but the supreme capitalist in you is going to be like, let them do whatever they want. They built a company from scratch. Hold on, they hold got on. up in the morning every I'm day. I'm here to help. I, I'm here to I help. Get it, but, but I build saying, units so people right. can live comfortable. We're, we're, we're ta- we're I don't t- build shitholes. We're talking like, about... When we grew up, people, <laughs> rent, people rented out shitholes. I get it. And, and you're getting all the money for them. You know. And you're getting the rent for them, as you should. Because, no, I have to increase the rent because... The taxes have gone higher. The water bill has gone higher. The insurance has gone way higher. We can talk about the that's mate, a whole separate. I call a plumber today. He doesn't come over for fifty bucks or a hundred bucks anymore. It's a three, four hundred dollar minimum. For, I don't even want to talk about electricians. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, three, four, five hundred. He puts a pair of plies in his pocket, <laughs> Absolutely. a meter in the other pocket, and he's making five, six thousand a day. Hey, we're surgeons. But anyway, day. I know you could almost say, Frank, you could almost say that it's really, really hard to be successful enough to be a, buy a house and make it affordable. I never said it was easy. Yeah, just got to get up in the morning. You got to get up early in the morning. You have to get up early in the morning. You have to. No, get up late and see what happens. Get up early in the morning. No, get up late. Work three jobs. Work five jobs. No, get up late. Oh, yeah. What did Jason like? Fuck this company, BlackRock, for buying all this shit. They're two capitalists. I'm the right amount of capitalist. Right, Frank? There is. No. The right amount. There is. Yeah, all right. I'll change my view. Get up late. Pour yourself a bowl of Fruit Loops, sugar, cancer, is, whatever you want. There is a very watch. Uh, what's in the morning? I don't even know what's on. Not in my, the not my point. Oh, watch you're the view. About, you're talking so about watch, how difficult it is for you. Watch the view. You'll get a lot. You'll get much more intelligent. You're Listen to those about fucking how idiots. Difficult it is for you to maintain profitability. In your it is because of the increase in taxes and the increase in this, and the I, increase in that, because and the plumbers I, and the electricians. Meanwhile, you're saying it should be really easy for some kid that's working minimum wage. To pull himself up by just getting up in the morning. And no, it should finish. not. Tell me, it should not be easy for a kid who's no making one. minimum wage to afford a home. I hear you. It should not be easy. That's not what we're talking about. But well, they've never made it easier to buy a home than today with the programs that they have out there. And we can go through them all. I'll run. I'll run you through them. I promise you. We do this every day. I, I get it, but easy to get a, e- easy to get approved and easy to make the payments are a little different. Two different things. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, there's, I think, it, I think no, it's no, no. easy to rent. No, no, no. There's strict guidelines. You have to qualify. It's it's. There's no. There's no. There's no backhanded. That time is over. Right. Those 2008. Stated, the geniuses. Those they stated gave out income. Loans, what happened? Sisa, Nina, no income, no asset. No income, no asset. That's what Let, happened. Let's talk. About no income, no asset. You don't have to tell me. You don't have to show me. You don't have to tell me what you make. I don't need to know what you have. Here's a million dollars. No. Here's the better one. Oh, it's negative a, it's a negative amortization problem. loans. I hear you. We're going to give you your rate 7%. We're going to we're going to charge you one. The other six, we're going to keep tacking it onto the back. You know what those programs were made for? They were made for people like me, a, a broker developer. I go a month where I make nothing. I got another month I make $40,000, right? So I can be chunky with my payments to my mortgage. They weren't made for the guy that works a nine to five where he's steady Eddie on his income. I, I, and they I, were handing them out I like would, candy. I would never argue he's that. He's a that's mathematician. A good, they were incentivizing people to sell those loans. I would never argue on any planet that those were good programs. Those but I'm were saying, I'm saying, programs. what I'm saying is, is but we're a, doing a it person, again today. A person making minimum wage should not have an easy time to be able to buy a home. That is the incorrect person. Should, should they have an easy time trying to find a place to rent? Yes. And that brings us full circle back to the real issue, and that is housing stock. We have none. We need more. Stop making it so difficult to create it and expensive so that we can make it, even if it's a little bit less of, uh, less expensive and it's a little bit more affordable. So you would, so every you would argue else. that the 40 40- Call it affordable or any affordable housing. Let's forget about 40 beaches. Any kind of affordable housing development, you argue, should go through the approval process faster than a non-affordable housing development. I think... If you had experienced people... So, so I'll, I'll probably say something that's probably contrary to most capitalistic views, but I, I see where we are in today's times, and I think that the just living this every single day, I eat, sleep, and breathe this stuff. I think that... Towns and cities that have inclusionary zoning, 
meaning that they already have an affordability component built into their bylaws on their own without needing the state to mandate it to them. And they make it very simple, do a better job with affordability than communities that don't and force developers, force developers to have to use the vehicle that is 40B. And I think that every development from this point forward should have an affordability component. It doesn't need to be 25%. 10% is more than enough. But if we're, for every 100 new units that we're creating, 10 of them can be affordable, that's great. That's great because that's 10 families that can now have Kid a home they didn't before. Shit. And guess what? 10% doesn't hurt the development all that much. The ones that are 25%, the 40Bs, those are expensive. And I can, and we can on another day, we can sit there and walk through the economics of these, but it's Why hard. Why not take it the next step? Right. What's the next step? So the next step is there's no real incentive given the lack of forced use for any developer to build affordable housing. Right. There's no. <coughs> there's no. Um, there's no real use. Oh, big kid, I know. <laughs> yeah. Hey, let me let's let's get off the forty B, bumblebee. Let's talk about rent control where it's all leading to. Well, it's a byproduct, right? Okay. It's, a byproduct. it's more than just rent control. Because rent control got barred uh, or banned, banned. That's all right. <laughs> it's, 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 it's like it's spring water. It's called a gentleman's pool. <laughs> what do you think the spring water comes Salud. from? Salud. <laughs> so anyway. Cheers. They, they banned it. Why don't you, why don't you explain what rent control is or was? Back in the seventies, explain, and then we. Yeah, this well, is this is before my time. So I, I've only my uncle only actually was one year. of them that was uh, owning properties in the family, which um, bought. With, I think he with just them. came from Italy, not even ten years earlier than that, and he started buying properties in 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 the north end of Boston, which I mean I mean I might not be correct in this, but I I va- I have a somewhat of a idea what he did. It was the time, who was it, uh, Flynn or White? That I think it was Flynn. Flynn, that you could buy properties in Boston for a set amount, I think from 1000 to ten grand, but you had to renovate them. Okay, so that gave opportunity to build up and renovate Boston. Uh, with that, it came with rent control. Sure. So now here you are, yeah, you buy a building for ten grand, but back then they had to sink a hundred grand or whatever it was to renovate an 18 unit building or four unit or whatever. I think you got one on the commercial. You got one on, one, right on, on North commercial street. street facing Faneuil hall, the clock tower. Was, yeah. uh, wow. I don't know how he did it. He got the, you know, it's a row of, co- of, of, yeah, I think I'm familiar of, with the building of, of condos that had yeah. four. Yeah, units. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He grabbed the last one. Yeah. The corner one. How f- the end one. Yeah. That, that duplicates like the, um, the mercantile building. Beautiful. Yes. 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 Beautiful. I know exactly. What you're talking he didn't even know what he was buying. Yeah. And that's the beauty of property. Yeah. Well, it was facing Christopher Columbus Park, right? But with rent control, well, I think it's the, he was hemorrhaging at the other one side. Time. No, it was facing 93. Yeah. At the, the time, Green Monster. Yeah, okay, I got you. I got you. That's yeah. before the big dig. Yeah. Yes. Maybe. He was literally <laughs> facing a highway. Yeah. <laughs> so literally the highway. With all, he had a bunch of units on Endicott Street, which he bought those buildings. Uh, yep. You know, whatever it was. But at the times, it justified. Um, with rent control. They were paying $50 a month rent back then. Right? My wife was actually living in the North End with her family. And up until rent control, I think they were paying, you know, under 100 bucks, but, you know, trying to make it. They were all hemorrhaging. And if you even look it up, the, you know, there was no repairs to the building because there was no money. Yeah. You know, there was some of them were arson bound. They would burn them down just to get everybody out. Who knows? I'm, I'm just guessing here uh, but when it finally got banned things turned around i mean boston is ground zero right now um you know it's right after new york uh, san fran we come a long way but wow. with with, with I don't rent know. control there's other ones like oregon and i'm talking about where we live right here what <laughs> we're talking about we, you know, when rent control ended, that's when Boston flourished. Yeah, you I know, re- if you kept rent control, it would go nowhere. I mean, I, when I was a kid, and I think I'm a little younger than everybody Does it help the room, renters, but- rent control? They'll stay there forever and never move on. What, what I'm trying to ask is... They live in a shithole for the rest of their what life. What I'm trying to ask, and I think people want to know, what is rent control? What, so, what what esa- it's it? essentially, it's, it's the state dictating... It's the state law. That Miss McGillicuddy pays 25 bucks a month for Three fucking 20 years. 
sure, maybe Miss G- McGillicuddy, but but what it is is they're they're mandating what the maximum amount of rent is for your unit, and then they will also mandate the appropriate amount of increase according to them. Okay. Right. So so they're telling you someone who's never owned a house and never invested money. And these are the people that are going to make the decision. That's not necessarily true. It is true. In my city, it's true. That's, I'm not talking for true. all cities. It's true in my city. It, it, he's talking about one specific yeah. case where it is extremely true. Uh, yeah. But but that aside, Frank, right? That aside, and I don't disagree with you. You know that. So, but that that aside, right? I do so, it all the time. He doesn't mind. He doesn't. <laughs> I. <laughs> this is the best part. Yeah. <laughs> Rent from from the studies that I've read. And uh, there's there's a good one. There was a multi year study that was done by the NDP. Um, you know, there's a there's a very obvious reason why they did away with rent control thirty years ago. And, Statewide, and it's and it's exactly what you're talking about, right? Who does it benefit? The fun, you know what the funny thing is this study. Elderly. Let me ask you. Who does it benefit? Elderly. Well, well, it could but but hold on, hold on, hold yeah, on. But that's why we're hold building. On. You talk when you say elderly, you really mean income restricted elderly. Sure, fixed income elderly. Fixed income. We have a lot elderly. of rich elderly. Okay, today. yeah. But we have one of the most progressive, progressive rental assistance programs, Section Eight, in the country. In the country. Have you ever applied for a voucher? Do you know how many vouchers that we place a year? I'm sure. Hundreds ourselves, our firm. But you're placing them. You're not applying for them. Doesn't matter. We help them. Sure, of course. We help them get. In in, in some instances, they already have. They have the voucher, and they not always. Sometimes we help them. We direct them on how to apply. Apply personally? Is that what you're saying? No, no. He's talking about apply, and he's not wrong. It's not. It's it's not super easy. Fucking pain in the ass to apply for a voucher. It's not super easy. I tried for a year. To you help. Should have called. I would have let you live in here for a little bit. Not for me. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> I tried for a year to help out one of my employees. <laughs> you and the kids, whatever. Look, here's a kid, right? Not going to name him. Got up in the morning. Every early? day. Early. 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 How early? You didn't watch cartoons? Early. He was at the store by 6.30. Oh, that's right? early. That's, that's early. early. Right? And he would stay as long as I wanted and beg me for overtime. Love, love this kid. Him. I love Where him. is he now? Uh, not doing great. Not doing great. Well, we'll continue. All right. Illerica, House of Correction? No, no. And you try to yeah, get him a voucher. So he was single income. His wife was disabled to a certain extent or whatever it was. Yeah. He had three kids. And, you know, as much as I wanted to pay this kid more, and I did pay him a lot more than, let's to be clear, because I'm going to sound like an asshole on this podcast, I paid him probably 30% more than what the standard wage is for the job he was hired for. It sounded like he was a stellar employee, though. Stellar employee. So, worth every penny. There you go. Didn't mind, which is why I paid him extra. Yeah. Still, single income, three kids, and a wife. Wife could only work part-time. The kid could not afford anything. Anthony, now, does that sound right to you? No. Does it sound, hold on. Does it sound right to you? Couldn't even get Section 8, though, because I paid him too much. Well, see, that's, well, that's, a, that's, this is, and, and yeah. we're going to touch Which on Which is topic. insane. And when I say too much, I mean, the kid probably made $45,000 a year. Yeah. It was, or whatever it was at the time, whatever it was, I can't remember exactly, but it was too much. How many years for the hit ago? This is, this is great. This is actually, this is really long ago, Anthony. This is great. Six years this ago. This is a really good example. So here's. I mentioned this in a couple of podcasts. No one was listening. What, what you're saying right now, and, and, and Frank, you. By all means, share, share share your viewpoint here. But what you're saying right now is the is this is just another microcosm of the issue where we have these this this fractured government that is siloed in all these different ways, whether it be 40B, where the town then gets the mandate, what the state law is passed, or you have the state allows these state agencies, housing authorities, to to decide who does and does not get a voucher. So essentially what they're doing is they're incentivizing people to what? Oh. Do nothing. Or make less. Or make less. But what is the whole point of the program? To help people. The whole mandate sure. of the program is to help people while they need it to get out of poverty. Sure. And, and rent control will not do that. Well, put, put that aside for a second. But he's, he's hit right a, for him. He, he's, he's, but he's got a really good point, right? Well, it won't. It won't. But we'll, go, we'll get into why. It, it should, but it won't. 
you have a kid who's the perfect example of the prime person who should have received assistance, should have been first in line, maybe only behind a single parent doing the same thing that he's sure. doing, but it sounds like he was pretty close to a single parent, sure. right, doing that. Where was his assistance? <clears throat> the system failed him. The system failed him. Oh, and it failed yeah. him because we're littered with these people that are cashing paychecks, that are obstructionists, that haven't walked a day in these people's shoes for the most part, sure. for the most part, and and you wanna you wanna talk about where the housing issue is, you have the last place you need to look is a landlord. The last place you need to look is is a developer. The last place you need to look is the homeowner who's gotta have to pay a two percent sales transfer fee or have to give their tenant who definitely can't afford the house the first right of refusal get delayed six months from selling the house. And the best part, we'll get into all that. Oh, the I don't best know, part, I don't know what the guidelines with the uh, rent control was, but obviously he was making too much. Forty-five thousand dollars a year is well, whatever, well, <laughs> whatever it was. It was too much. And too much uh, what, to I, get vote. And it was too much. I, I, I gave this kid a car. What was to it? use for the family? And I took the money for the car, wholesale vehicle. Yeah. Right. I gave it to him. My cost. I fixed it up so it was nice. Drive okay. I didn't write a note because he couldn't pay cash for the thing, even though it was thirty-five hundred bucks or whatever it is. I literally took the money over however long he's working at like $25 a week out of the out of the car, out of his check. Right? Because he's got to pay some things for it. So what do you have? You have a business owner now subsidizing his employee's but life you, because the system has failed us. Yes, but but devil's advocate, right? Devil's advocate. What, while I agree he's not making enough to pay rent or buy a home. The kid's oh, he's stuck in 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 cog. He's stuck in the middle. He's stuck in this weird limbo. But he, here's where I have, here's where I can play devil's advocate. The government has to draw a line somewhere. Agreed. So agreed. They drew the line wrong. Okay. So they draw the line a little bit higher. Is that wrong? It can't be a gray area. Are we but, talking about a common sense decision? I just want to know. You yes. can boil everything fucking down to a catchphrase. No, but I, I don't five think seconds. I don't think he's wrong. I don't think he's wrong. Thank you. I don't think he's wrong. Common sense. Yeah, it is common sense. All right, Co I but it's common sense after a report's filed and research has been completed and people understand what this is. What's this situation? You need you need like? a report done to tell you that a kid making forty five thousand dollars a year supporting a family of five. Should have to get denied for assistance. No, but you need a report to find out where exactly the line should be. All right, maybe, maybe, and 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 you know what? They've got years and decades right. now of data. You know what? We need to worry about the people that are actually making money, uh, risking their money, investing their money to helping people like this. But but to, but to to caveat and put a put a tie a bow on this, that kid deserved a break. He 100%. deserved to, he, he did deserved the help. He, did. he didn't get it for the same reason that rent control wouldn't have helped him either. Because the truth is, a family of five, maybe he squeezes into a three-bedroom. They got to live on top of each other. Maybe sure. a two-bedroom. Sure. Where's he work? We were, we were where's he work? Time. We, we were. But where's time, he work? Central Mass. Central Mass, okay. Yeah. Maybe you get a two-bedroom out that way for 1200 a month. Sure. Does that sound about right? It's about right. Buy a house about right. for a couple hundred grand. It depends on, yeah. Good. Time. You could. You could buy a house for a couple hundred grand. Here, a couple shootings and Yeah, but he's yeah. not going to... But he's also not going to qualify because he's he's been it's robbing Peter to pay Paul for house. his whole life. Sure. So he misses payments here and yeah, there. Yeah. And now his credit don't qualify. Yeah. Right? It's a it's a shit situation all over the place. So he's also a byproduct of probably his upbringing sure. and, and a whole other litany of reasons that we can get into. And I sat with this kid and I did a budget with him and I went through his finances on a weekly basis and told him exactly where to pay and how to do it and how to manage the money and what where to cut and where to spend and everything else. Would, right. Were you taught these things? Was I taught these things? Yeah. How to do all this stuff? Uh, by product of watching. Frank, were you taught these things? My father? He did... I don't know what the fuck he taught me. <laughs> he was gone all day, working from like six in the morning till seven at night. He taught you. I, I, you know what he taught you? About this early, I made more mistakes. You know what he taught you? I figured it out. What? What do you think he taught you? How to get up in the morning? Tell Common me. sense. Oh, oh, there it is. Gonna, oh, he did, no, oh, he did. I'm gonna give all my credit to my mother. I don't think. Yeah. <laughs> she did not let me sleep in the morning. Yep. 
That woman That's would wake job. up at 637 every day. Set, I come home, when I was getting old, I come home hammered at like 6 in the morning, sneaking in the house. I knew she was going to wake me up like a half hour later. I'm like, oh, what the fuck, here she comes. And then boom, back up. I remember once I, I escaped. I was working with uh, Bruno's father a uh, couple weeks in the summer. And we, I got home at like 5 in the morning. I knew he was going to pick me up at 7. I went down the street to where the pot, where the party was. And I says, "Hey, can I stay here?" Like five, six guys. We all stayed down the cellar. We all passed out. All I hear is, "Is there a Frank? Frank downstairs? He found you." The, the owner of the house, the kid's mother, father, whatever he was. <laughs> and I'm like, who the, f- "Who the fuck's looking for me?" <laughs> Your mother was there. I'm like, "Yeah, I'm here." He's like, "Some guys here looking for you." Oh. My uncle in Italian. I was like, how the fuck did he find me? Oh my God, I had to go dig dirt for like eight hours, ten hours, digging all day. Were you working with him? 50 bucks a day, you know what I mean? It was a Sunday morning. Well, I, I think, you know, getting back to your topic, Frank, rent I control. I want to talk about the other... Um, well, get to rent control first, because I think it's important... Rent control, I believe, will hurt both parties. So let's let's start with the obvious. How's this? If a renter is someday looking forward to buy a house someday, rent control is like almost like welfare. They'll ne- it'll slim your chances down. And then, why would you want to buy a house if, especially, let's say you want to buy a two family so you can afford it, and you have these restrictions? Yeah. Oh, I, so for the same reason that people, for the same reason that people won't get out of Section Eight to make room for people like Anthony's and Bullio needed it, but even if you get there, you now you have, have to the deal same people that won't let go of a rent-controlled a unit. Never. Do you know that sixty percent of rent-controlled units are a- actually end up benefiting people that um, don't need them? Study, study proved it. They'll take advantage of it. Is it true that? A rent controlled now, or even back in the day. I know it's not around now. Once it's under your name, hypothetically, I don't know. You pass. Know. Yeah, I know what you mean. You transfer to. I, I don't know. I don't. Know. In New York, you it could. Did. In New York, you could. That was part of the problem. Yeah, yeah. I think in there's Boston, another. There's another issue. Yeah, they did. Yeah, you could. You could. You could transfer end. it to generations. Uncle was hemorrhaging. Oh God! He didn't yeah. make money until they ended it. When they ended rent control, that's when my uncle was able can to I, make some money. Can I ask you a stupid question? Right, so you got a rent control apartment when you were young, right? Are you telling me that a guy like you, guy like you two, guy like me, is not going to want to buy a house just because he's got a rent control apartment? Who knows? Why would I? It, it may change money. your whole perspective on life. Yeah, true. We don't. It may change your whole perspective then, on life. You don't know they're going to change. You think it's forever. So you're going to live in your one or two bedroom apartment for the rest of your life just because it's rent controlled. You're well, not going to try to. May, you may buy a single family for yourself. Maybe I misunderstood in, you. But in, in, in investing wise, it would probably. I thought you meant the, 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 the truth. Oh wait, wait. The truth. Oh, I thought you meant buying an, a, a, a unit. A you're, but no, but you're making the assumption automatically that somebody who gets into a rent controlled apartment is never going to want to do anything better with their life because they scored a million dollar, you know, deal just to get this two hundred and fifty dollar a month rent controlled apartment. That's not necessarily the case. You don't think it'll happen? I'm sure it happens. Okay, that's my answer. But that doesn't mean it's the it's the norm. You're 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 painting with an enormously wide brush here. I think it'll happen Majority. more often than not. Yeah. Just like Section Eight isn't going to the right people, it's going to the people that know how to game the system the best. I don't. All right, I want to go to the. They, they want to charge a two percent. Uh, what do they call transfer tax? Sales transfer tax. Sales transfer. I just paid one of those. Which they have in New Did Hampshire really? at the where Vermont. Oh shit! I bought a house in Vermont. I paid a four percent transfer tax. How'd you feel about that? Uh, a little shitty because it was a surprise. I didn't know about it. Four percent? Four percent, yeah. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah, I was... Uh, so you're giving up almost nine percent to but to sell a house. Where's the other five? The real estate agent. Why are you bringing them in this? Because that's next. <laughs> they, prov- they provided you a service. What Ab- the- you know what? I agree 100%. What, 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 what people did, what think did, they can buy a house on what, their what own. Did the, what did the town... What did that municipality do for him? Nothing. The service they provided. Nothing. Nothing. They just so already pay hand. taxes. We already pay the taxes. There t- you go. transfer taxes statewide, by the way. It's not municipality based. It's statewide. Sure. So it's even and, New and, Hampshire. And do you know? Do you, I, I, I'm, you may not have looked. It's it just up. more money for them to mismanage. Where, where's Where's that fund go to? Where's that money go to? Couldn't tell you. Nobody knows. Yeah. I'll tell you, the roads are perfect everywhere in Vermont. Though. Are they really? Oh my God, spectacular roads. Maybe that's where they go. Ridiculous. I pay two percent to get perfect roads. I don't know about you. 
I pay taxes already. I can pay another two. I would, I would definitely pay two percent. I guarantee Massachusetts will never get perfect roads. You never. pay taxes for roads. They didn't say good ones. If two percent go no, like this infrastructure. Bill. What happened? It's like our first what infrastructure happened? bill yeah. we ever had in our life. What happened life. to build back in, better? What? What happened to build We've back? We've been building for years. It's just it's but you get, people are getting bamboozled with these political terms and thinking everything's for certain. So people. hold on, for, it's not. It's for one person, what? a government worker, and that's it. What do you think? They're trying to collect more money so they can mismanage and just fucking spend it uh, irresponsibly. I don't know if they End try to collect more money to mismanage. Yeah. They're trying to take more money away from you. For what reason? They want to divest your wealth. Thank you. So they can reappropriate it. And this is just another name for the same play. That's really what the truth is. That's, okay, that's now, they, now the best one is the eviction. They want to do no eviction. And if you do want to, th listen to fucking geniuses. In it's first right of refusal. First right of refusal. And if, hold on, let's just say a guy violates your lease that doesn't exist anymore because they're saying at the end of the year they can, they can opt out at any time. If the guy violates the lease in multiple areas, doesn't pay the rent, you are responsible to pay first, last security, and a move-out fee to get that person out. Okay. That's insane. Okay, that's what the that's what they're pushing. Now that's a mi you're, you're that's a landlord. minimum. I want to see that's that. A minimum. And I'm supposed to pay. I'm supposed to move him and get him another apartment. I'm supposed to bamboozle another landlord to move this guy in. Have you had to evict somebody? Yeah. So I just did one. It's a process. I just did one. My way works easier than going to court. Sure, it does. But it, it's until they take you to court. <laughs> yeah, one kid did. <laughs> so I, I did one. I about do it all over. Twenty years ago, it was about twenty-five grand. Twenty-five. Twenty years ago. Twenty years ago. It just cost me thirty. About twenty-five. And it took me. It took me a year. Oh Jesus! Go my way. It cost me twelve. <laughs> so I'm, I'll I'll put this in perspective. I've had, I've been a landlord for twenty years. Yep. I've properly evicted. Zero tenants. I've had tenants not pay rent. I've had tenants leave unexpectedly in the middle of their lease. I've not evicted a single person. I've been sued by tenants. Um, I've had all these things. I've never actually had to go through the full eviction proceedings for a tenant. How long do they not pay you for? Uh, three months. Okay. I mean, that's. It wasn't super long. That's reasonable. But I'll tell you my super secret, you know, click this link. For the one greatest trick. Cash for keys? No, that, that's a good one. But no, um, was below market rents. I kept my people forever. Sure. Well, what happens when you have a good person turn bad? Because that's what happened to me. Never happened. That's what happened to me. Never that's happened. what happened to me. I w Quick story. Now, why did they turn bad? This is what I want. I want to hear why they turned I, who, bad. Who knows? Because I'm going to tell you why they turned yeah. bad. I had, a, I had a three, four roommate situation. The kids smoke weed. I said, you can't smoke weed in the house. Go smoke outside. Then he wasn't paying the rent. So I told his roommates, I says, you guys are responsible for the rent. They flipped out at the kid. And he was just, he stopped paying for over a month, two months, I think, it went by. So I sent them the bill. And then I sent a, a, a letter of, I'm going to start an a eviction, eviction process. Yeah. And they flipped out. They took all his stuff, which wasn't much, and they put it out in the front lawn. They can't do that. They did it. Okay. I happen to... In the neighborhood where I used to live, we, we had a, houses in the neighborhood. And then I had to go to a wake. My uncle passed away. I'm with my mother, my father, and my wife in the car. And I drove by, and I seen all the furniture. Why'd you drive by? Because I have to go that way to get 93. That's not why you drove by. I'm telling you. <laughs> you have to show you the map? You did, you did the guinea thing. You Whatever. Your I properties. wanted to see. Because the cops called you, you me. Do the, you, do the ra you do the round. You do the round. I said, let me see what's going on. <laughs> yeah. This game was 6'4". You, you take, look like you a take the stroll around. You check yeah. it out. Yeah, I always they pull around. their barrels in. Yeah, yeah, always. Yeah, who's over there? They having a party. Hands behind the because back. <laughs> I'm a full-time <laughs> landlord. It's actually on the route to the... I give you 100%. I'll tell you straight up. You call me any time of the night, I'm there. All right? So this kid's like 6'4", beard, you know, burly-looking kid. Yeah. So I pull up. I go, hey, what happened? I just got a call from the cops. Your, what's with your furniture? He goes, go fuck your mother. To you? Yes. I'm in a suit. So I, I, I got my mother in the car. I mean, <laughs> that you look good. 
What does that mean? Those, oh, I get those, up. Hold on. Those are, <laughs> what does that have to do with that? Those, those were his <laughs> exact words? <laughs> yeah. What am I going to make them up? Yeah, I, I think so. I don't make I'm shit up. People just don't no. believe what I go six, through. 6'4", 20 something bearded guy. Yes. Just pulled a phrase straight out of Goodfellas. <laughs> Call my wife, Amelia! <laughs> Paula, <laughs> please, it got worse. I got outside. I said, Unless hey. she's a witness, I don't need to hear She was me. a witness. I just said, <laughs> <laughs> So your mother was in the car? My mother, my We're going to the wink. Did your mother hear this? Yes, I oh, think. She don't understand. That's awful. So all of a sudden, he said, What? He said, Go fuck a who? No. <laughs> no. I'm just kidding. That I'm kidding. Fuck me. Fuck, fuck me. <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> Yo, and I swear in my house, she's like, oh, yeah, fuck it, fuck it, fuck it. I'm like, I'm sorry, stop. It doesn't go like that. So I get out of the car. I go, kid, my mother's in the car. He pulls out a knife. Come I on. swear to God. And I'm like, oh, fuck. To be clear, you did not put his stuff out. No. His own roommates did it. Yes, they were bullshit. And then they screwed me. And then he pulled a knife on you. Pulls a knife on me. Jesus. I'm still lost in the story. Is the kid that pulled the knife on you one of the people that was staying or the people no. that got kicked out? The guy <coughs> who told me to think I kicked out. Okay. Yeah. He didn't get kicked out. He's looking at his furniture, yeah. smoking a cigarette, looking at him. And then when he pulled the knife on, I'm like, okay. I trained for this shit. And I'm like, oh, here we go. First thing you're supposed to do is run away. <laughs> I, supposed to, I did. With Adi Tarani. Right, go ahead. Karate Adi. I guess. Karate Adi. Adi. I'm supposed to run away. Yeah, did, Crap, did back Give an out of your plug. But then when I looked, he had this bamboo chair right there, right? I took the bamboo chair, ba boom, fucking knife went across the street. <laughs> now he's like, shit. I fucking. That's they cra- called him. They call that Krav Maga. They call him Charlie Bamboo right now. You got Bamboo. That's his new name, Charlie Bamboo. But unfortunately, Dude. some lady stopped, videotaped everything. She got the fourth quarter, you know what I mean? She didn't see the whole beginning. That's all it takes. So. You know, cops came, and I went back to the car. I says, I said, Ma, did you see that? The kid pulled a knife on me. He goes, he was begging for his life after he lost the knife. <laughs> I was like, I was in his, I was scared for my life. My wife is like, you need, you need psychiatric help. I'm like, did you people witness what I witnessed? <laughs> so then, you know, whatever. So what's the end of the story? I didn't get to go to my uncle's Did wake you evict him? or funeral because I had to go to fucking court the next day. <laughs> oh, yeah. I got an attorney. I had to go to court. You got a, did you get arrested for that? Yeah. Oh, jeez. They put me and him, and the, the kid was crying like a bitch in there, and they let him go. And they kept me there till I think, oh, 11, 12 at night. You didn't cry? No. I, well, I, they, uh, what do you want? You got to cry. I, I should have. He was like, I'm not taking my but dog off just the beach. <laughs> so I went. Wait, 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 wait. Wrong time, wrong time, wrong time. <laughs> Fuck it. Wrong I felt time. better. <laughs> I didn't feel. I, I felt better. You got to live with yourself. Some kid tells you to go fuck your mother. What are you going to do? I'm going to fucking kill him. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. I get it. And I was in the zone. So long story I, short. I know, forget I about know, what I was doing. I know that. So I go to court and the guy's, you know, <clears throat> standing there. I got the best attorney. And he's like, uh, they sh- they're they looking to put me in jail for a year because of past. Put you in jail? Yes, because of shit in the 80s and 90s. Oh. I'm like, I tell my attorney, 20, 30 years ago. Yeah. He's like, well, something did happen in 2000. I go, yeah, it was squashed. <laughs> <laughs> and all of a sudden. And then last week. He called a quaff. <laughs> he calls the judge for a sidebar. We go over there, and he's like, uh, you know, your Honor, this guy's a business guy. He's got family. He does this. Da, be, be, ba, boop, ba, ba. The guy's like, I know, but I saw the video. I'm like, what video? He's like, they got you on video. I'm like, okay, did you see the knife he pulled out? He goes, no. I just counted 16 times you hit him with the chair. <laughs> I'm like, come on. 16 times. That's a hell of a chair. Was 16 times. I never forget, it was a little old Italian guy. I go, sure it wasn't like 14? <laughs> yeah. He's like, can you stay out of trouble for three months? I go, absolutely. He's like, I recommend three months probation. Fuck it. I took it. Whatever. And the kid, we had to go to civil uh, family court after that for the eviction. Yeah. And he's got some point, court-appointed lawyer, and he's whispered in my ear. My attorney says, I'm going to be there for another three months. I said, we'll see. When we went there, first time in my life, 48 hours, he had to vacate. Really? Yeah. Good for you. And I had to give him 500 bucks. So on the way out, I says, you'll never see that 500. 
<laughs> he says, I'll fucking take it to court again. I'm like, all right, we'll see. <laughs> good, thing, good thing to put it on record in video. I'm going to tell you. The deal was he had to take all the shit out of the apartment. He didn't do it. And what did he leave? The shit on my lawn. Because he had no car. He had a backpack. He goes, how am I supposed to carry that? I said, till that shit goes. No 500. And he fucked me because the rest of the tenants saw the beating I gave the kid. They all left the next day. They said they were in fear of their oh, life. Jesus. So I lost the whole place. I got sued for discrimination. Jesus man. Christ. I got sued for discrimination. I, had I, thought, I thought you were the perfect landlord who never raised rents. I don't. How do they sue you for discrimination? So I had uh, it was a three-family house, and the middle floor, um, they always paid their rent on time by money order. So the toughest, toughest kind of tenant to evict, right? Yeah, Enmo today. Best. And... Um, like it? Love it. Huh. I don't like it. Me either. No. What are you talking about? They pay on the first. Sometimes mm. earlier. How did you like it? The Venmo. I don't, I don't know. The no. record's sketchy. I don't love it. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, Anthony. I want to know how you. Um, so, oh, it was funny. So I like chess. I, I had a, I had a, a and, and I had a, a. You don't look like you dis- discriminate. I'm not a discriminator. Um, but there was a middle floor of this three family house. There was a mother and daughter, always paid their rent on the first every month, but they were horrible tenants. Okay. They extremely noisy, made all kinds of problems with the, the other tenants. Sure. Uh, all hours of the night, banging, uh, unauthorized construction. They put extra locks on the doors, oh, wow. all this other kind of stuff. Um, anyway, the other tenants who had been there for a really long time, they're like, this is a really big problem. Like, we can't live here anymore. And, you know, there is precedent to evict. It's in the lease, right? Sure. You know, I, my leases were always very, very good. So uh, I sent them a 14-day notice to quit. And, you know, for, uh, for a cause, for a cause. Yep. And then I was immediately uh, served uh, with papers for a discrimination suit. Wow. Uh, it went away very, very quickly. Um, uh, their, their claim was that I was um, discriminating against them because they were African-American. Um, the only problem with their claim was the other that tenants were the too. other tenants <laughs> were too. Um, Did you yeah, tell them they were work. Sicilian? No. <laughs> they were better off saying they were, they were better off doing it the other way around. Does your father no, was, help? Was, does he practice law? He does. Yeah. Civil construction Did litigation. He represent you well. That's uh, not in this matter. matter. Oh. Not in this matter. But the um, but no, it was could a, he? It, in he could have. Sure. But we had um you know, top floor was actually an interracial couple that had been there for years, and the fr- uh, first floor was LGBTQ couple and the middle floor, they were probably the least diverse because just a mother and a daughter. They were just obnoxious. And it didn't last, but I was fully prepared that I was going to lose this case. Yeah. 100%. At, which is sort of the reason why it's I'm completely today. out of long-term rental game. You don't like it. Completely out. I'm in all short-term a, rentals now. It's a grind. I'm all short-term rentals. It's a grind. It is. All right. Let's get the evictions. All right. Now, here's the problem I have with these... these uh, people that are bringing up all these uh, new restrictions and everything. The condo conversions, they've already done it in some of them. They're bringing it to Method now. Those are people that actually, it's a big part of, uh, what do you want to call it, the, the construction flip world, I guess. I mean, it's crazy. Condo conversions. For, for years. Which um, I think helps people buy a house, mm, get into a house, sharing. Um, no? L- l- listen, what do we need? More units, right? So in that case, more units, great. But they own them now. <clears throat> sure, and that's fine too. It's more home ownership. I'm all for that, right? Like I own a real estate. Isn't brokerage. that the goal? The goal is to put people in houses, right? We want to do that. So, so yeah, more units is great. Um, the, the, you know, the issue you run into is a lot of times these units because of the high cost of real estate aren't serving necessarily the population that they need. So the condo flips, I don't know if they're as beneficial as I'd like to say they are. Again, the benefit I see is that trickle-down effect, right? So you'll have maybe somebody that has a smaller condo that's then going to sell that condo, trade up to this bigger condo, or, or leaving an apartment and moving into that condo, which then creates an opening somewhere else. So <clears throat> the, f- the flipper's tax, though, the flippers tax is just a rebranded, ver- same play, right, guys? We've been talking about this the whole night. Sure. Just another way for them to take a small, negligible amount of your profits 
and reappropriate it. Oh, absolutely. That 2% is going to be 4% <laughs> like Vermont. But, and, and, and it just starts like that. So the minute you let them in the door with this, where it's not the issue, and that's not where the money needs to come from. They could what, have, if the, what if the money went to subsidizing developers to build uh, affordable housing? It should, and they have funds for that, which they don't appropriate that way. But what if it did? Would it be worth it? I would consider it at that point, yeah. So, but here's the thing. You, the, the flippers tax, 2%, does it slow down the market? It'll increase the market. It, it just, add more it money. Just, but this is my point, Anthony. It's like the data's there. It shows us. It just... All these little nicks and knack fees that we just keep incurring. It never ends. They're just adding to the cost. But people are paying it. So But that's the problem. That's the problem. Is that the problem? Well, it is, it is the problem. You need to keep if, people weren't, if people weren't going to buy them, You're right. you wouldn't build them. No, right. They are paying no, them, no, but no. they're making less of an income. They're, 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 pay, they're paying. They're doing okay. They're pay, they're, well, what's okay? We live in Boston, Boston area. Let me tell you something. There's more money than you think in the Boston if area. if they're building the to excess if they're building to excess and they're buying and renting. Where's the problem? There is no problem. I I put an apartment out there. But like Anthony say, said, where is the is there a, a problem? A two be, a two, the, three bedroom for three. The, grand. the issue the issue is we get over a hundred lack of in, inventory. So it's not enough available. There's a, there's it's a, the market. We get over a hundred calls for an apartment. On any oh, yeah. we put out there. Oh, yeah. There is money. I see these kids that just graduated college. I see a lot of them starting at 125, 135. You know, there is a lot of big... We have but, multiple Fortune five, 500 companies in just the Boston area alone. Greatest, of, greatest institutions used to be. Greatest institutions for higher education. We, greatest we run greatest hospitals zero. in the world. I agree. Maybe outside, maybe more yeah. up north. Listen, I want to live on Miami Beach. I can't afford it. Am I calling Miami Beach the council? Hey, you're going to lower lower these uh, condos because I want to live here. No. I go find somewhere where I can afford. Now, unfortunately, or fortunately, you know, you can go more north of, of Boston and you'll find something affordable. But to be in Boston and in the Boston area, okay, especially the cities that abut Boston, you have to pay. You have to make money. You have to be able to afford them because it costs, just like Gadano says, just to pull a permit, just to just to uh, develop any type of property from so two you units. You live in Boston. You eleven. Gotta you got eleven dollars. You got to get up early in the morning and <clears throat> hey, hey. So you got to get. You got to pay. Okay, fine. Where do you get the staff that's low income? I'm sorry. Say that one more time. Where do you get your low income staff from? From Lawrence. So they're gonna drive an hour to get Averill, the job that pays. Yes. Yeah, so they're gonna drive an hour. I drove an hour for decades. I drove to Providence for to my an corporate, hour. My corporate to go gig to work. until I until I said enough. Your corporate gig paid probably more than what a dishwasher makes. Sure. Well, you can dishwasher. Sure. Where's, your, where's your dishwasher gonna live? He can work locally if he's just a dishwasher. Okay, but wherever he you wants, you need them. dishwashers in Boston. You need dishwashers in Reading. But he's you need not, dishwashers he's not, in Bedford. He's not wrong. He's Where not the wrong. hell are they going to live? In the affordable housing that they're stopping us from building. There you go. <laughs> and here we are, Fair right? Hey, full circle. So, so at the end of the day, don't look at us. I'm not blaming you. Don't. He's part of it. That's what I mean. I, I, I said it was the collect. It was the it's capital units. Tenants. The collective us. It. Yeah. The collective us, right? Yeah. We aren't the cause of this issue. We aren't. And and there's ways to solve it, but taxing, controlling rents, taxing sales even higher, taxing developers who are risking development's a risky game. Well, they're trying not to, act. They're, well, let they're, me ask you this: They're trying to. Dis- Where are the best hospitals? It depends on for what, but for the most part, downtown Boston. Okay. Where are the best colleges? The, all over the country. The oh, best. The best. I don't know. Stanford, UCLA, Berkeley, uh, UCLA. Uh, we've got. We've, are you he's, missing he's, a few here? He's, he's N- NYU. Uh, we've got a few. We've got it. We've got a few. We've got a few. We got a few. Say it. No. We got a few. <laughs> <laughs> MIT. No. Harvard. Okay. BU. Yeah. BC. Yeah. We also. We also have. We have. Uh, you know, Kendall Square, which is now like a tech center. So there's a lot of. How much is a coffee in Kendall Square? Insane. Twelve dollars. I'd be bullshit <laughs> of that because you need one every day. No, you don't. I you gotta get up in the morning and make your coffee. I do. Exactly. She makes the best coffee. I'm sure. She puts a little Molinati in it. Oh, it's good. Yeah. Oh yeah. Every morning. First thing. Every day. First thing. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, right. <laughs> God forbid she brought us down some. Yeah. Oh, come on. <laughs> but, She's slacking. But you know, I I think you've got to you've got to take a really hard look at the people that are making the decisions, not the people that are passing the laws necessarily, the people that are really making the decisions here because they aren't in our best interest. No, they need, they need more the people who are making of a study. And yeah, need- the people that are awarding these vouchers, the people that are actually uh, reviewing our applications, the people that are imposing these sales taxes. The government because- only has a carrot or a stick. They have to pick which one to use. And you're gonna dis- there's going to be disagreements with whatever form they choose. Right now, they want to disincentivize flipping houses in Somerville, right? Okay, that ideally, that'll bring down the cost of the single family house so that people will buy it and then be able to okay. flip it in the house. And then, the and then what are they doing with rent control? I, I have nothing to do with rent control. I, I, don't, I don't agree with rent control at all. But there so, has to be so a if they on- disin- if they disincentivize the flipper, yeah. trying to create more units, sure. usually. It creates housing shortages. Not more cheap units, more units. Rent that's control. Let's talk about more units. We can agree there's got to be a trickle down effect there. Yeah. Somebody's moving, they're moving, they're coming from somewhere. It's not out of mommy and daddy's house buying million dollar property. I got an me. answer for your dishwasher. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm not sure I want to hear it. Is this, is this where we're going to end on? He can dishwash during the day or at night, yeah. and he can do gaming during the day. Or he can drive Uber during the day or at night. Listen, I've got, There's got, a lot I've of, got guys that work no, for Anthony me. Anthony wanted to know where is he staying, where is he, where is he housed. There's plenty, of, there's plenty of housing in Boston. I've got guys Absolutely. that work for they, me. They push them to 25%. I know a lot of developers that work in, that build in Boston. That, that woo lady there, she doesn't ask for 10%. You're only going to get the permit if you go to 25%. How long's the waiting list? They're doing it. How long's the waiting list? There's units available right now. I'll show you. I can pull up Boston's affordable housing. I see. Oh, and they're not full. But why don't we talk about... Why don't we, it's why don't we help people work harder or... Or uh, earlier, oh, f- get up uh, earlier. So we can't solve the world's problems, but what we can do well, is they, they, <laughs> what we I can hate do to is say we the can... Italians, but mostly people that migrated to this country. How do you think they made it? Of all ethnic backgrounds, they woke up early, they worked twenty hours a day, and they made it happen. My grandfather, my grandfather came to America with legitimately two nickels to rub together. They all did. My father-in-law came to America, two nickels to rub together. These guys worked night and day, day and night broke their backs to get it done to advance their family. And I don't, listen, don't, you know, let's not act like they were making millions. They didn't smoke two packs a day, which today is a hundred bucks a week. They didn't fucking go out to the bars and drink or go out to eat every fucking day. No, they day. were working. They didn't have time they, for that. When I tell you in the lot, I think in the first one we talked about, I know it sounds stupid, I've never got to go to a restaurant with my parents. I've never been to a Bruins game. I've never been to a Celtics game. I never... Do you guys take vacations? Never went to a vac... Once. And he saved up for 10 years. I finally <laughs> went when I was 12. We went for three months in Italy, which was the best experience of my life, okay? So that is nice. It, it was the best experience. I found out who oh, I you was. you got to go. You got to make the most Everything. of Everything. But we... Sac- three my months parents is more sacrificed. vacation I've had in my Everybody whole life. <laughs> you got to sacrifice. Three months. One generation has to sacrifice. And you got to get up so you're early. You're talking about one generation has to sacrifice to break the poverty cycle. Yes. That's a whole show by itself, and I think it's a great topic. Yeah. Me. Well, I, I'm very proud. We tried. I got bamboozled because it was my first one. I was a little nervous, but yeah, so do it again. I am 100% because I'm Italian. I'm speaking for the Italians. I have to justify that. That the people that I know and talk to, and there's, you know, my cousin over there, Jay, was like, oh, so you're making an assumption on the people you talk to. You know what? I hear it everywhere. They all worked hard for the most part. Yeah, and a couple of them fell through the cracks, but for the most part, they were a hard working culture and, and, and they're a it's big part of America. Same can, of be, making said, America same today. can be said for the, the Irish when they I came said that. Here. I'm speaking for the Italians. I'm a representative yeah, yeah. of the Italians I mean, right now. Ethic, I think what you're trying to say and what I gotta bring I, some what Irish I, here. Just for the record. <clears throat> I think 50, 60% of my friends are Irish. I have seen them. They do exist. And diverse. <laughs> and, and Indians, blacks, Same. everything. I'll, I'll guys, tell you a quick story. Well, no, I'm I got, I got uh, <laughs> the, guys, the guys setting the steel at my house. Great guys. They're setting the steel at my house. And they're, um, they're uh, I, don't know, I think, I, 
think they were Mexican, but I could have been wrong. Actually, they're um, hardworking people. They are oh, very hardworking people. Are you kidding me? <laughs> are you kidding me? Them Brazilians, so, especially today. So it's getting close to three o'clock, and my guys are used to working until like six, seven o'clock. Yeah, they I never love saw it. They love to work. It's getting close to three o'clock, and they're not done yet. And I'm like, guys, all right. I'm like, uh, you know, no worries. We still got three hours. He goes, three hours. He goes. Three o'clock, no glug, 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 no work, work, work. I go, I can go home because we're not drinking on site. No, but I never worked. <laughs> I never worked eight, nine to five, eight to four. We worked from 6.30 in the morning so to six, seven so o'clock. I, di- I did, Frank. I did for a lot of years. You got to do it. I'd hop in the car at seven. I'd be in the office at eight. And, you know, I, I worked my time from eight to five. A lot of times I bring my work home. But then when I got home, I went on my real estate appointments. Yeah. And I worked that my wife hated me. I still do. We that. used to work from five in the morning till midnight. She would take off around seven, eight o'clock at night, until we started having kids. But I'd go to the real the the properties and finish what I started back and forth. You know, you have to sacrifice. You there have to are put in that time. The argument that I hear is we shouldn't have to do that to be able to live a life. Today, that's the argument I hear. And, and, and stop taxing us. Stop raising the 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 uh, uh, the way the the way to live today. It cost, the cost of living so high. Well, you keep lending money or giving money away to all these other countries. Somebody's got to pay the bill. No, but I see all the geniuses. We're there. getting into like five them. other shows. All right, anyway. <laughs> I'm glad Gaidano could make it I'm tonight. Glad, he helped glad, out big time, I glad think. Glad to be here. Um, Remax, uh, what's the name of it? Rena- Remax Renaissance. Remax Renaissance. By the way, my, my opinions are my own. My opinions are my They're own. They're all our own. They are my own, but I will, I will tell but you. from experience. Fr- from experience. From experience. Rent control won't work because it de-incentivizes de- landlords to make repairs. It's going gonna, it's gonna to benefit the wrong people like the voucher program. It won't help everybody needs to. It's going to de-incentivize people from trying to step up in the world because they'll get complacent. It's human nature, right? And you can't keep taxing the people. you got to get out of the way with permitting because if we can't put up more units, affordability is never going to come in check. We're never going to get this thing under control. Well, we need the right... Simple economics. We need, we need more experienced people to make these decisions. And That's the... Bo- that, there you go, Frank. Somehow That's- I feel insulted when I go to these <clears throat> meetings as they like, uh, you know, you'll have a guy... Like the other night, you'll have a guy who's been on the board, ran for mayor. He was on the board for 20-something years. He was explaining everything politely and correctly. They ridicule him. No. Time is up. Yeah. Instead of saying, hey, you got... You know, wrap it up. You got 10 more seconds. They're fucking arrogant. They are. Because you know why? Because they never had to deal. I watched that. Movie. You know, Mike Tyson says it best. Everybody's Everybody's tough. a tough guy. Yeah, I love punched it. in the fucking head. Yeah. Or you pull a knife out and get hit with a bamboo chair. <laughs> All right. Capone Manganello. 2024. <laughs> <laughs> vote on the ticket. Yeah, get out and vote. That's the problem. Our people don't vote. I know. You know? I vote. I vote. Which All right. You know your business, so I'm, I'm, I'm impressed. Thank you. Next time we talk about Ohm's Law. Yeah. Something I'm affiliated with. <laughs> talk about cars. Cars, Ohm's Law. Oh, I would love to do an episode on cars. Oh, my I would God. Too. I'd love to do an episode on cars. That's my business. Yeah. All right, gentlemen. Uh, we're going to go back to eat the rest of the prosciutto and steak and cheese sandwiches. Let's go. Salute. Well, <laughs> thank you. I hope you learned something from tonight. Salute. Salute. Cheers. Thank you.